The human form of life is different than the animals. Nayam deho deha bajam the loke. The animals are enjoying eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. The animals are enjoying sense gratification. A human being whose life is dedicated to sense gratification is of no better quality than that of the animals. Human life is meant for self-realization. And the only means of attaining self-realization is tapasya. Now, there are many teachers today who are considered to be spiritual teachers who teach that there's really no need for tapasya. There's no need to deny yourself of anything. All you have to do is just perform some meditation and be a little pious and you'll enjoy life better. You'll actually enjoy life in a better way if you're more peaceful, you're more self-controlled, and you're living in a pious way where sinful reactions are not inundating you with miseries. That is to some extent the mode of goodness. But to actually transcend the modes of nature, tapodivyam putrakayena satvam, we must perform tapasya. Srila Prabhupada lost a lot of potential candidates when he said no illicit sex, no intoxication, no gambling, and no meat-eating. When he said not to talk prajalpa. When he explained how we should reduce our sleeping, eat the proper foods, and live in a certain way by which we become detached from the body and the senses. Spiritual life is not meant to do some various yogic exercises so that you can enjoy the body better. Yoga means to detach yourself from the pleasures of the body. And the ultimate yoga, yogi madgatenantaratmana, is to find the highest pleasure in serving the senses of God. Otherwise, whether we're pious or impious, at the time of death, our mind will uncontrollably focus on our attachments. Therefore, this Varnashram Dharma is recommended for human society because it prepares one for the final exam of death. It's a scientific, systematic way of living so that ultimately you can attain perfection. Beginning of life, brahmacharya, where we perform austerities, where we actually learn to be happy with austerities. When you're young, so many impressions have lasting impact within our life. So whether it's a boy or a girl, you should be trained in such a way to find happiness in service, to find happiness in a very simple life, to perform austerities. Actually, for children, austerity is fun if they're just guided in the proper way. And then when one comes to marriageable age, if one feels a great need and desire to marry, then one attains the Grihasta Ashram. And there's so many rules and regulations in the Grihasta Ashram to moderate and protect one from sense gratification. The difference between Grihasta and Grihamedi is very simple. Tapasya. Grihamedi means sense enjoyment and Grihasta means tapasya. But the tapasyas of Krishna consciousness are not hard. They do not make us cold-hearted. Actually, the more we perform tapasya in the proper spirit, the more happy we become. We become detached from the sources of anxieties and miseries. And we're finding our happiness where real happiness is. In hearing about Krishna, in chanting the glories and names of Krishna, in seeing the beautiful form of Krishna, of associating with wonderful, kind-hearted devotees of Krishna, of performing service to Krishna. And then after the children are grown up, and there's really no need for working, then vanaprastha. Vanaprastha means husband and wife, practically no sense gratification. They simply live together to serve. And then some may take sannyas. So the idea is by the time 
death comes, you're not attached to anything except Krishna. And every person, from their infancy up until their death, in possible old age, every phase of life should really be planning. Planning so that when we do leave this world, we'll be completely, exclusively attached to Krishna. Then we go back home, back to Godhead. Krishna says, without doubt, that is human life. You were listening to Radhanath Swami on devotionalnectar.com.